Politics 101. If something's wrong, you blame the immigrants. And that's precisely what was happening in San Francisco 150 years ago. Just as an incident was about to happen, a man stood between the Chinese and the locals, quietly bowed his head, and recited the Lord's Prayer. Both crowds dispersed. Nobody was to be hurt on that day. The magical man was a friend to them all. Emperor Norton, the first and only emperor of the United States. Joshua Norton came to San Francisco as an already rich man. He went about his business and was fairly successful. Until one day he tried to corner the rice market. Norton invested pretty much everything he had and lost all of it, including his mind. He disappeared after the ordeal. Nobody had seen or heard from him until he showed up at various newspaper offices with a document in which he deemed that the citizens proclaimed him the emperor of these United States. The editors found him amusing. They played along and so did the people of San Francisco. Every day, Norton would wander about inspecting the streets of his city. He would greet everyone and everyone would greet him. Whether a royal salute or a simple bow, it was really all the same to his majesty. During his daily patrol, Norton made certain that all sidewalks were unobstructed. He reviewed the police to see they were on duty, he checked on the progress of needed street repairs, inspected buildings under construction, and of course, if anybody had a minute or two, he was always up for a chat about all kinds of topics. Norton's majestic reign produced quite a few imperial decrees. The corrupt US Congress was to be dissolved. Both the Republican and Democratic parties needed to be abolished for creating tension in his realm. And yes, whoever called San Francisco the abominable word, Frisco, was to pay $25. Which in today's money is like a thousand bucks. And you gotta admit, that's a small price to pay for uttering such a dumb word. Norton also frequently wrote to Queen Victoria and other royal counterparts throughout the world. And he got replies. Just not from them. Although the King of Hawaii at the time said that he would only speak to Norton and didn't recognize the other US government. Yeah, that's probably the reason why Hawaii doesn't have a king anymore. Just as Norton took care of his city, his city took care of him. Officers gave him a new uniform whenever they noticed his old one was starting to look shabby. Every theater and every restaurant in town had a seat and a table reserved for the emperor. Sometimes it was free of charge, but sometimes it had to be paid with Norton's own currency, happily printed by the local press. One day, during the emperor's stroll, a policeman, obviously new in town, arrested Norton and locked him up to be sent to a mental institution. The public was so outraged that Norton was immediately let free. He wasn't one to bear a grudge, so the policeman got an imperial pardon the very same day. To a lot of people, Norton was a man of mystery. Many of them thought that he wasn't really bankrupt, but was pretending. His progressive ideas about building a bridge across the San Francisco Bay, creating a League of Nations and equal rights for women were all considered odd at the time. Upon his death, authorities found only a few dollars in change. The king is dead, read all the newspapers as more than 30,000 people gathered for the funeral of their most beloved citizen. Be sure to like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next week!